Hi, I'm Sam, and I'm with these creatures again. That's Porridge, and this is Ziggy. Come on. Somebody asked, um, last time I was with these guys a few weeks ago, look at the clouds standing in the valley floor. Um, last time I was with these guys a few weeks ago, I pointed at some heather and said, isn't that beautiful? And I, and I didn't let the, the camera linger long enough. And somebody said, what's heather? So this is heather. These are the colours of Scotland, really. Orange and purple and green. And uh, you can see the hillside is cov it covered in it, but it's very subtle, very muted. And this green plant here is bracken. Bracken grows everywhere and it's starting to die off. And it dies off in this beautiful burnt orange colour. And as the autumn really descends, it just dies. And it, it's glorious because in the misty autumn mornings, the mist falls like glitter onto this dying bracken and it, it's more vibrant, more beautiful in its decay than at any other time. And you can see the hillside is just turning orange. I love autumn, I love autumn. So, I do have a few things to talk about. I'm gonna walk down the hill through the gate. Hopefully won't bump into anyone. It's early on Sunday morning. Um, so look at this color. I, I never really knew that brown could be so beautiful until I moved here. Um, yeah, I, have, I do have quite a lot I want to talk about and I need to choose something because I can't really... <laughs> what are you doing? I can't really string it all together and make it into a, like a coherent sort of subject. So um, I need to pick something. <clears throat> and uh, the thing that sort of feels the most, the easiest to talk about at the moment is... Uh, where I'll start, I think, and if the other topics, if the other subjects sort of present themselves seamlessly, then we'll talk about all of it. But for now, I'm gonna talk about something that uh, I think maybe all my videos are triggering in some way. Oh, look at this, look, that's what I'm talking about. Beautiful decay, look at this. You can see the whole hillside is purple, but it's very subtle. Look at it, orange and purple and... It's just rich. Yeah, so... I'll start here. Um, you know, sometimes people in the comments say, it's great to see that you've healed or you're at peace. And I don't, you know, I want to be clear because I think it's unrealistic to say, okay, we are healed or at peace. Peace becomes more stable, more available. And, you know, we cross thresholds in our, in the, in the healing process. And those thresholds are really sort of very clear, <clears throat> but they take time. But we're never healed. I think we're, we're always healing. And though I've made a, so much prog progress, particularly over the last year since I physically detransitioned, um, I still live with, um, you know, the nervous system responses and where the PTSD still lives in me because my identity and my experience as I was growing was completely defined by uh, fear. Um, so, you know, I'm okay in places like this. I'm okay. 
you know I could stand on top of the hill and be out here and and I I, I don't feel fear but when I'm inside a house I do I feel fear I never sit with my back to the door I always have the doors locked I'm always you know if, even now I I still feel hyper vigilant I'm not in a in a state of uh, you know panic or anything like that but it does come sometimes and because I'm staying at my friend's house for a couple of days looking after these wee creatures there's always a period of adjustment when I first arrive where I'm I'm terrified um and one of the things that comes up as a symbolic representation of the trauma I, I experienced as a child and then repeated all through my life, the fear, the shame, the self-disgust, the feeling of corruption, all of that is symbolized by something that I'm going to talk about in this video so be aware this might be very triggering this video so if you have OCD around creepy crawlies <clears throat> which I think is very common with abuse and uh, childhood trauma don't watch this but I'm going to try and talk about it in a way that's uplifting and healing so be brave so yeah in my nightmares and waking life, the symbolic representation of the shame and the disgust and the corruption uh, is a spider. And, uh, you know, when I first started to, when I lived on an island quite a few years ago, I moved from the island nearly five years ago, <clears throat> but I spent quite a few years on that island. And when I went to that island, I was I was running. I'd been running all my life, but I'd been running for myself. And so I couldn't escape. And everything that I was trying to escape, I just brought with me to a place I could run no further. <whistles> this is why he's called Ziggy, because he zigzags everywhere. What are you doing? Here's porridge. So I could run no further. And because I could run no further, uh, I started to really fall apart. So I, there was none of my, the things I, I used to divert my attention away from the pain I was living with, they just weren't there. I was living on an, in a little shed off grid um, and it was very challenging, but beautiful. I'd, look, I'd go back in a heartbeat if I could afford it. But, um, there, I started to, to experience r repetitive, terrifying nightmares and even hallucinations, really. I would wake up screaming and I'd see the shadows move above me and I, I would, there would be spiders everywhere. And it was like my inner state of fear was having a, a metaphysical effect on reality and I was creating a sympathetic space for these spiders to to say yep this is what you're scared of you need to face it but I think in in another way the, the spiders are, th are there to sort of make you not face it they say that they, they are there to say okay this represents everything you don't want to look at so don't look at it because you're terrified of it <clears throat> but it became so intrusive and I was so fucking terrified I had to come up with a way of dealing with it. And uh, what I did, hello my boy, come on. What I did was uh, after weeks of going through this, I, um, I used a visualization and I visualized myself as, a, as the, the little boy that I was. I was filthy and dirty and uh, you know, in the childhood home, the bathroom was outside the back door next to the coal shed. And to get to it, I had to go out the back door and above the back door, there was all these pipes. The house was a Victorian house and it was very dilapidated and there was all this hessian lagging around the pipes. And 
there was just spiders webs everywhere spiders webs everywhere and it's just terrifying and inside the bathroom there was uh, it was a tiny little bath even for me as a child but inside the bath wait wait inside the bath <coughs> inside the bathroom there was a single light bulb on the wall and the paint was peeling and it was always moist and the loose the, the toilet was an old victorian toilet and the loose seat was broken and everywhere there were funnels these black bodies in them and it was just terrifying and i think maybe because of that period because i was conscious then i experienced a lot of trauma before i became conscious you know between zero and four um but you know around seven years old was when it got really really bad and so that period of my childhood was when i lived in that house and had that toilet and it was always like that nothing ever changed for years it just looked like that and uh, <clears throat> so i just used to use the sink i had a, i was in the attic room and i had a sink and i used to use that as a toilet and i would wash in it and just use a toilet elsewhere i was just terrified and so the symbology of the spider is that period of my life so to to deal with the, the these recurring nightmares of spiders when i was living on the island um i imagined myself as a little boy um the little boy that i was all dirty and smelly and i was in this room this this space let's call it a space and it was I couldn't see how big it was because it was in shadow apart from where I was standing it was lit by this bulb and uh, surrounding me uh, and I was looking up to them surrounding me were these black bodies with mandibles and huge spiders and their bodies extended into the shadows and I couldn't see them but they were hairy huge black legs and I was just surrounded by them and I the little boy that I was I envisaged and I stood there and I said to every single one of them I looked into their red eyes and I touched them on their mandibles and I, I stood on tiptoe and I kissed them on the, on the cheek <laughs> and I said I love you and I felt it. I said, I love you. I love you. You are my shame. You are my pain. You are my fear. And you are mine and I love you. And it completely transformed um, what I was dealing with. And it was very, very healing. But you know a lot has happened since then because i didn't really understand still then this is like years ago when i used that visualization then i hadn't even begun to see clearly what happened and feel what happened I, it was just still these sort of amorphous kind of vague feelings of shame guilt disgust fear there was no detail so it was much easier to do that then but now there's a lot of detail because a part of healing is seeing clearly seeing clearly feeling deeply because that's what brings us into presence and out of our own head and out of the past and into this moment because this is real that's not we're making it real by carrying it and, and reliving it all the time so now I, as I've been really struggling over the last couple of months, and try and talk about that as well in this video, I've been really struggling. And if this process I've been sharing has been leading anywhere, it's here. <clears throat> so this last week, I, I, I tried to use that visualization again because I was just haunted by those black bodies again. And, uh, you know, it's terrifying, and I, I would go to bed at night, and I'd be absolutely terrified. There's only a, a, 
a bed in my bedroom because you know frankly the the life i what i've lived with all my life i didn't want to give anything anywhere to hide but of course there is only one place to hide when all you have in, is a bed in your bedroom and that's under the bed <laughs> so uh, it doesn't make it any easier so i you know going to bed at night you know, it's, it's ridiculous i'm 55 nearly i would just be with a torch under the bed looking everywhere looking in the corners of the room around the skirting board behind my books on the floor and still you know i'd wait I, it got to the point where i was waking up emptying out my pillows emptying out the the, the duvet and still i'd be fucking terrified and i just saw that i'm not going to go through this again but it was worse than ever and so i tried to use the visualization again and uh, but something quite incredible has changed because i tried to visualize myself as a little boy and it just didn't feel right and eventually i was working through these images to try and sort of like okay what feels right he's so good come here i was working through these images trying to find come here trying to find the right image to work with that felt right let's just have a little brief interlude look at you you little creamy dragon i think she looks like a dragon she's all wet you beautiful girl there's the boy he's a little bit more complicated ziggy So I was trying to find the right image to work with and I couldn't, I just couldn't settle on something. And then I sort of said, okay, I pictured myself as a man like I am now with my arm around myself as a little boy and that didn't work standing in front of me. And then we became sort of like merged into each other. And then over time, as I was trying to work with this image, I eventually became a constellation of former cells you know as expressions of different periods in my life the trans woman the young man the child the baby um, and me now and it was like this constellation of beings all stood in the same space and uh and then when i pictured that and these huge black bodies of spiders with their mandibles and this light bulb above my head something happened and a, a light began to become present in this little constellation of beings that was me and the light just shone brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and the light bulb just became consumed in this brighter light and all the spiders around they just became gray and then they became translucent they're still there they're still there but i can see through them i can see through the shame i can see through the fear so the spiders are all still there and that's just this beautiful light just consuming the space <clears throat> and uh, i just thought i'd share that because i just thought You know what a healing image that is for us to work with because we are light we are light so can we stop feeding that sense of unworthiness and corruption and wrongness stop telling ourselves the story over and over and over again and that's what i've been doing on this channel you know that's why over the last six months since i detransitioned I've been saying in most of my videos, I don't, I don't want to keep saying this anymore. And I, you know, but I didn't know how to be on this channel anymore. I didn't know how to be in life because I, I'd been retelling that story over and over and over again. I've been doing it on this channel repeatedly, trying to find the truth and say, okay, can, can you see all this? Let me investigate it. Let me share it. Let me tell this over and over again, trying to to understand it trying to find why why 
why did I become who I became? What does all this mean? What's true? What's false? What's what's real? And all I found was that I'm not a story. I'm not those experiences. You know, I think we get to a point as we age that we realise we're barely even human. We are in the world, but not of it. And our, the visceral experience, the agony of isolation and pain and suffering that we endure as, as humans, as beings, in relationship, that is what is the teacher. Can you do the work to transcend your own story, the idea of self? in its fears and oh good boy you wait can we transcend the pain because I know that when I was young I was and I have been selfish all my life and I don't mean maliciously I have been selfish but selfish people hurt others you hurt yourself you hurt the world And we're selfish because we're fucking terrified. And then we live in the isolation of our own self-centeredness. So, you know, that's what defines us as traumatised people, is we're trapped in self. Because relationships wounded us so deeply, we had no one else but ourself. So the healing work is to... Find the edge of who you are. Tell yourself the story as as much as you need to and you will realise that you're just torturing yourself. It's not who you are, it's not what you are. It's what happened to you. You are something else. You are light. And that light is uncreated. Everything else is created. The light that shines through us is the light of God and it's uncreated. And so that's the the ultimate foundational relationship of what we are is 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 uh, a child of God, and so as we kind of you know because we're traumatized, we want control, we need control, and you know that we're just constantly you know trying to reinforce boundaries and put effort into into getting what we want what we need it's just fucking torture um so i think that the, you know the reason i found it so much more difficult to talk in the same way in these videos and to talk about myself it's because I've, i kind of realize all this now and it's not appropriate to keep retelling the story over and over again but you know it's what i've done on this channel um and the most healing thing that you can do i think is to accept that foundational relationship which is something that's come very very slowly to me and very reluctantly um but you know there is eternity in that relationship there is fearlessness there is real life and you realise how small the world you've been living in when you've been retelling yourself that story. You know, you realise how small that world is. It's only as small as self. And the fears and the stories of self. I think someone might be coming, his tail's wagging. Oh, he's a good boy. He's so good. This dog, he used to injure himself because he was just such a bloody lunatic on the scent of something he would just be an absolute maniac but now he just he's just so settled in i've been looking after him on and off for a year and my friend uh, he whose dogs these are she's just put so more well, they both have her and her husband they put so much effort into his well-being and they've done the same with me that you know that i think they're the closest thing i have to best friends around here and you know they've put so much effort into my rehabilitation as well that's the love of a relationship so when you're ready you know you need to give yourself away it's the greatest kindness you can do and that's where you really find out who you are it's not in your own head it's not in your story you know 
So, we'll, okay, listen, I'm going to end with this. Because we're going down the hill and there's a possibility I might bump into someone. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll share this last little bit and then I'll start recording again when we get to the bottom because we'll go into the river like we did last time. So this is my final thought. <clears throat> I finished the book I was, I was, I talked about in the last video and it's C.S. Lewis, Till We Have Faces. He thought it was his best work and it is an, it, it's a very, very good book. It's very clear. The message is clear. And it's one that I'd already, I already knew. But to, to, to have it so beautifully told, uh, his clarity is amazing, C.S. Lewis. And as the, the main character is dying towards the end of the book, she, she's in this liminal space between life and death. And she's being questioned. She's having this life review. And she's asked, what have you been saying with your life? What have you been saying with your life? And I just thought, fuck. What have I been saying? And I think for those people that watch these videos, I just think you haven't been saying anything. You've been crying out, crying out in confusion. Why? Why? Why did this happen? What did it mean? Why do I feel like this? Why am I in so much pain? Why? That cry contains so much injustice, fear, desperation. What have you been doing? What have you been saying with your life? I thought about that so much. How anger and confusion defined that cry. What do you want to say with your life? I want to say thank you. I want to say... Love. I want to embody love and acceptance and care. God, he's so good. Look at this little boy. You know, so what do you want to say with your life? It's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to me. Do you want to scream out in anguish as you are? As you have been, as I have been. You want to do that? It's not supposed to be like this. We're supposed to live in relationship. You know, I did uh, some plant medicine <laughs> last winter. I don't recommend doing it unless you're with a guide, but I, I just, I was desperate and I did it myself several times and it was fucking terrifying. But I found myself curled up in a ball, screaming. I was, just did it in a dark room alone. And I found myself three times over the course of a couple of weeks screaming, curled up in a ball, screaming into a pillow. And what did I say over and over again? I don't want to feel like this anymore. That's what I said. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. And I said it over and over and over and over again. I don't want to feel like this anymore. And I don't. I don't feel like that anymore. So, you know, I think that 
of the healing journey is really defined by a gradual, gradual opening to everything that you didn't want to feel, everything you didn't want to see. You don't have to see it all, you don't have to feed it all. You just need to gradually open the aperture inside. And as you do that, you let it all out, you cry, you grieve, you feel more deeply, you become more present and you can let go of the refuge of self and find out who you are in relationship. For me, first with dogs, First with dogs, and then with people. People are difficult, they'll always be difficult because people are complicated. And finding the others who understand all this stuff that I've been talking about and the stuff that you feel is difficult. Don't try and explain yourself to normal people, if there's any such thing. Don't try and just explain yourself to people that, that don't have an experience of you know, complex trauma, relational trauma, because you'll just other yourself even more. You have to be discerning. Find the others. Find those that understand. And then you can gradually sort of inhabit yourself without an apology, without the desperate need to explain all the time. Sorry, I know I'm saying a lot here, but I thought I might as well carry on talking because we're getting to the bottom. Um, so... sure there's something I've forgotten what have I forgotten I'll give you a different view while I think about what I might have forgotten do you look at the orange look at the orange the whole hillside if you get a hit, look, look. whole hillside covered in bracken burnt orange and there's a mist falling it's just breathtaking. Look at that gently swinging tail. Right, we're going for a dip. There's black currants down there at the end of the polytunnel. I should be picking them later. So, what have I forgotten? Let me just have a think. I will say this actually. You know, it's very strange. Though, you know, what I go through with making these videos, and every time I reach, reach a, sort of a point where I just want to disappear again and, and hide, I get emails from people. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, uh, that, that really kept me on track, and I just kept doing it because I would think, fuck, I can't do this. I'm sharing too openly. And uh, I, I, I say, oh, I'm going to delete everything tomorrow morning and then just stop. And I would wake up and there'd be an email from someone saying, your videos really help me. Some, sometimes people would say, your videos are the only thing that's keeping me going. And, uh, and so I carried on. And that happened maybe five or six times over the last four years. And, the, you know, this difficulty I've been going through lately <coughs> is... Uh, it's been really, really challenging and I have wanted to go through that again. In the last couple of weeks, I wanted to delete everything and just hide away again. And I got so many emails from people who must have kind of sensed that in a psychic way. And I, the emails I got from people were just absolutely, just the most touching emails I've had. And there was, there was one from uh, a lady who's an artist and, uh, she just said such beautiful things and I looked at I looked at her, her channel when she, she's got a YouTube channel I may share it in the description but I looked at her channel I looked at her channel and the art that she was making and it was so beautiful I just, it brought me to tears just to see someone take so much care and attention and it was just tender. It was tender. And I think that 
you know, the, what I went through as a kid, it stole tenderness from me. And as a man now, you know, discovering what kind of man I am through this process of sharing and the communications I have with people and just the tenderness that I'm shown in the comments and in the emails I get, you know, it's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late to learn how to feel. It's never too late to make yourself available. And that tender care is something that, you know, though I, I'm sure most people who watch these videos would say they couldn't afford that for long periods in their life. That tender care for yourself and for others is, you know, what makes us beautiful, I think. Tenderness, empathy, care. Life can be brutal. We can be brutal with ourselves. But tenderness and kindness, you know, is what makes us human, I think. Even though we're only here for a short time. God, I'm rambling now, aren't I? So thank you so much to everybody that, you know, reaches out, takes the time to comment, takes the time to email me. I'm sorry, I, I can't, I'm not answering emails very quickly at the moment. <clears throat> I've had some incredible emails lately. Um, thank you to everybody that donates. Um, you know, it really makes a difference. And do you know what, I've, sp I've spent some of the money that was donated. I've, uh, I saw a video online and it was a baby that was really crying, really distressed and someone dinged a, a Tibetan singing bowl and the baby just instantly relaxed. And I thought, oh, that looks helpful. So I found a, a website that sell sells uh, sound healing equipment and I used some of the money that was donated um, to, I bought a Tibetan singing bowl and a tuning fork, a weighted tuning fork that you ding and place it on your heart. So that should be arriving this week. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll let you know how that goes in the next video. It's quite, it was quite expensive, it was a couple of hundred quid, but money well spent. So thank you to everyone that donates because the money that's donated it always goes on, on stuff like healthy food, just things I really need um, that I would have to wait to be able to buy so like supplements vitamins you know food good food and things like tibetan healing bowls <laughs> so thank you because you know the donations make that possible um you know eventually i'd like to go back to real work but at the moment i'm still kind of in a pretty raw state and uh, so at the moment i'm just you know, doing uh, things like this, walking dogs. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'll see you soon.